These lush green dense forests are a thing of pride for the state of Assam in India, mostly because of the fact that this forest harbors a few denizens which are dexterous in the art of acrobatics and can be aptly termed as the acrobats of the forest. The hula gibbon, the only ape found in India, is an agile gymnast in the woods of Northeast India. The male is jet black with white eyebrows and the golden blonde one is the female. These are entirely arboreal creatures, always confined to the higher branches of the trees. And it's a very rare thing to see a gibbon on the ground. As a matter of fact, in some places, the local folks consider it a bad omen to see Hulak walking on the ground. Gibbons are monogamous and they pair for life. The families generally consist of a male, a female, and a juvenile. There is a strong family bond and the juveniles would continue to forest with the adults until they have grown large enough to part and start their own families. the newborns of buffish or milky white and this newborn will cling to his mother's belly for some time now before it eventually learns to grasp the branches and make its way through the canopy. They are frugivorous. Their primary diet consists of fruits and leaves are a major supplement. Flowers and occasionally insects are preferred as well. Often heard than seen, the resonating calls of the gibbons are very familiar to the local people. The calls can be heard until late in the morning and in the afternoons. These calls are a means of communication among the families living far apart from each other. The hulaks are canopy dwellers and they need continuous canopy for moving in search of food. Loss of contiguous canopy of the forests are isolating the populations. This is turning out to be a major threat to the surviving populations of this majestic ape, it is quite an intriguing fact that due to the Brahmaputra river, the Hula Gibbons could not cross over to the north and hence its population is confined to the southern stretches of the Brahmaputra river. The Cat Langur The common forest langur of Northeast India, the Cat Langur is another strikingly colored acrobat of the forest.
their faces black with sharply contrasting paler, buff to reddish cheeks, and the head is blackish with long, erect, coarse hair directed backwards in what looks like a cap, and hence the name Kaplangur. Kaplangurs primarily feeds on leaves, preferably young leaves. Fruits, seeds and flowers are also taken. Foraging for the young and tender leaves makes them climb to the topmost branches of the trees. Their agile movement among the high branches with their long tail gives them a very elegant look. This young one is desperately trying to learn the ways of its mother. Good thing for it, for this will ensure its survival in the wild later. Kaplingurs take giant leaves in the air to cover the gaps across the branches. Kaplingurs are gregarious creatures and troop sizes range from 2 to 15 individuals and they are mostly active at the daytime. They are generally arboreal but the older individuals are often seen foraging on the ground as well. The bulging dark crest of hair on his head gives the impression of it wearing a conspicuous looking cap. This makes it easy to tell the cap lingur apart from the common lingur. This provides a majestic sight for the beholder. The potential predator of the Kaplingur is the jackal. Pythons are also known to prey on the langurs. Adult males, as a defensive strategy, gives out an alarm bark on sighting a jackal. This alerts the troop and the flee to the tufts to evade the danger. But in the last scheme of things, we humans have proven to be their arch enemies. The Kaplingur is a comparatively common species in Northeast India. Yet the population of this langur has significantly decimated over the years, giving it a vulnerable status. The golden langur, it's one of the most endangered primate species in India. With a rich golden and bright creamish coat, the golden langur is a handsome denizen of the forest. A graceful looking creature, the long tail of the golden langur helps it to balance itself while leaping across the branches of the trees. The golden langur, however, has an alarmingly small distribution. The Brahmaputra River acts as a barrier to its range, confining the population within the small limits. The 
golden lingots are gregarious and the troops are seen having 5 to 15 individuals they are active at the daytime and feeds on ripe and unripe fruits seeds leaves buds and flowers the troops usually remain confined to the higher branches of the trees this whole troop is seeing the day off lazily sitting in the branches and basking in the sun habitat degradation is a major threat to the species here Their graceful long tails hanging from the high branches indeed provides a mesmerizing sight. Loss of contiguous forests due to clearing for cultivation is leading to the isolation of populations, which is not a healthy sign. Though it is not hunted by the locals, there are a number of instances where langurs have been electrocuted in the power lines and this can be termed as a serious local threat arguably the most vibrant and beautiful of all primates in india the golden langur needs some serious conservation measures to ensure its healthy survival it goes without saying however that we as people must want to keep our wildlife and our pristine natural ecosystems alive if this is not done then it is not just the capling goose the hula gibbon or the golden langur that will vanish but many other species as well in the mellow light of the evening sun this individual is probably retiring to rest for the night with the hope to wake up for a better tomorrow.